Page 72, class sponsored by Rabbi Avram Aradian for those that need a refor shleima. Okay, the Pasik says, Shlach Lucha Nashim, send your people the spies. So, in your Miraglim, show you Nasiye, Don Shishem. The in your Miraglim, they were very prominent people. The Grashi says they were kosher. So, Umatam, Shulorotu, the Konasar Tisro. Why didn't they want to go into Tisro? It's a famous question. To understand what the essence of Eretz Yisrael is. They didn't want to, what's, what's, this, what's Eretz Yisrael? It's not only the physical, uh, geographic uh, area. He said, he makes it, says in the past, the land that I'm giving them, is a land flowing with milk and honey. What type of praise is this? The Torah praises Hari Tisrael that it's a land flowing with milk and honey. If it's say flowing with oil, it makes sense. You make a lot of money. What's so great about a land flowing with milk and honey? You need to understand. Most of the physical mitzvahs, especially agricultural mitzvahs, like the Indian of Zroyim and Kochim and Bamidba are only temporary Kurbanis. So look at another thing. Two of the orders of Mishnah, Zroyim and Kochim, all the agricultural laws basically, you know, Shemitah, there's uh, Truma, Maiser, all that, primarily only apply in Eretz Yisrael. And all the laws of Kurbanis only apply in Eretz Yisrael. So look at you know, why are they dafka dependent on Eretz Yisrael? So he says in Exiv, man does not live on bread alone, anything that Hashem spoke. What's the, the famous question we learned in the many my body? Dr. Abba asked, what's unique about bread? A person is also created with the utterance of Hashem. So why does a person need to live from bread? Because of the word of Hashem that's in the bread. We have our own word of Hashem that's in us. Okay? So the Altareb asks a number of questions. Number one, why did the Meragam change their minds? Secondly, what's Eretz Yisrael all about? What's the praise that Eretz Yisrael is a land flowing with milk and honey? And thirdly, what, I mean, fourthly, whatever, that uh, what do they say a man lives, doesn't live on bread alone but the word of Hashem, but a person has his own word of Hashem in him. What does he need that? He says, The word of Hashem in the, in the pla- inanimate plant and animal, they come from the world of Tehu. The Adam will take in the world comes the person comes in the world of Tikkun, Lochin Tarakha Adam, Lakabu Khayusi mid Daimit Sam Chai Davka. Therefore a person needs to get their chayas only from lower things, because lower things come from a higher source. Fisha Shada Shara Bahni Tutsin. Huma eid naila kumuvurba makamach. Okay, so what's the whole union of a person living on bread? The higher the thing, the lower it falls. Inanimate plant animal are lower than person people in this world. Therefore, they come from a higher source. Therefore, a person sustains himself from things which are seemingly lower because, in essence, they're really higher. So now he says like this: So the same thing. Why does in the sham? Dafka come into this low world, why doesn't it just stay in Ganeiden? To break evil, why is it coming down? It will become revealed a greater level of alokus, like the advantage of light when it comes from dark. Okay? So the answer is because ultimately a greater level of godliness is in the lower level than it is in the higher level. Because the higher the thing, the lower it falls. Therefore, the neshama comes down into a low body, into a dark world of gullus and so on and so forth. Why? Because dafke, in the darkness, can you come to a greater level of light. Only by elevating something lower, 
do you come to a higher level than you were before? Just like the analogy of God in an Izzard a seed planted in the ground, Shaydeya recovered. So this that it rots, it germinates. Shenir kevnisid bahore tzitzemeh acherchav b'teisus ravik yisner. Then dafke by the seed rotting in the ground, only by coming down lower by rotting, does it come to a super greater level that it plants and things grow. Okay, so what's the explanation of all this? We say this in Pascalio, right? You brought out ten sviras, I mean ten tikunim, the cardinal on Sphere and you call them the ten sviras, Lanhog of an almond. To be to run the world with them, almond is steam and delay is galleon. World with are not hidden, you know, hidden world, revealed world, all that. So he says, Almin Miloshin Helam. Okay? The word Almin, Elam, comes from the word Helam, concealment. The Nick of the Zayar, Hecholis, they're called, in Zayar, they're called not Svidus, they're called Hecholis, chambers. In Zayar, they're called Hechala Chesed, Hechala Gvura, Hechala Schus, Ubetechem Nishamish in Nanamizi Vashchina. And their nisham is sitting there that they that enjoy great um, basking godliness. O malochim sheim dem ba'ava v'yir pachat, and malochim that stand there also like machne michol is ava. Machne gavriel is the level of v'yir pachat. O kamayim and as Ali Gemara says, no hardina yeitzim zeirz and shelchayes. Where does we know there's a river called Nardinur. Nadino is obviously a spiritual river that Neshamas have to table in before it goes to Ganeiden, and from level to level to Ganeiden has to go through Nardinur. So the Gemara says in Chagiga, where does the Nardinur come from? It's from the sweat of the Malachim that are called Chayis HaKadish. Very good question. And since so when does God talk? You don't know. And where do you have the hand of God? Okay. So why is this any different than all those other things that we? Okay. What it means is like this: When does a, a person sweat? What causes sweat? Over, uh, over energizing yourself. Okay. So the malachim are overexerting themselves in praising Hashem. So from that comes out Kaviyacha, spiritual, not physical sweat, but spiritual sweat. But river is very tangible. What? River is very tangible. A river? River, you say. Not a spiritual, there, not a spirit. From their sweat comes river, you say, right? A spiritual river. Oh, it's a spiritual river. That's what I said at the beginning. No, it's not the Mississippi. Every Malach says praise of Hashem according to his understanding. And the Hechel is the, the chamber, is a general word, including all the details in it. For instance, Hechel Chesed, okay, the chamber of Chesed that the Zerah says, says, Klolusu Chesed. Generally speaking, it's Chesed. But now you have chesed, shibah chesed, gvurda, shibah chesed, tfeda, shibah chesed, and so on. You have chacham, shibah chesed, shibah chesed, shibah chesed, v'chol ha'asa sviris, u'kamo shela igul, u'baye shekelem kol ha'prati shibah seichel. Okay? In other words, this chamber is a general, like, house, and the house has in it all the many details. So heichel ha'chesed, generally speaking, is the world of chesed, but it has... Chachma of Chesed, Bina of Chesed, all the ten levels intertwined. The Zel Peter Shlan Hoga Vahin Almin. That's what the Zayar means when it says Hashem created ten Tikkunim and He called them ten Svidas. Or in the in Zayar they're called Heichal, they're Vahin Almin, they're Bechinas Seichol, they're Bechinas Akilelis. As a general level. Ulan Hog, if I meant to run the, with them, the details in it, meaning Hashem, the, it says in Tukun 
by the way, Paschalio is the introduction of Zayat, Tikkun Zayat. It says, Hashem created ten Tikkunim, okay, he calls them ten Svitas, Lan Hoga Bein Alman, to run the world with them. So he says, what does that mean? There's ten general Hecholim, like he, I mean, ten, has, yeah, ten, that there's Hechel Chesed, it's a general concept. And then, Lan Hoga Bein Alman, the way this runs the rest of it. In other words, this is running all the details in it. There's a general Chesed, the world of Chesed, the chamber of Chesed, and then that runs the world, all the details of Chesed in it. And this Heichal basically is a concealment of Hashem. It shouldn't be revealed into that chamber only according to that level of grasp not to be, I'll explain in a second, not to be bought with Hashem because they're limited creatures. Meaning like this. The concept of a world, even Olam Atzilus, let's say. Yeah, you have a world of Atzilus. Even though Atzilus is a world of godliness, right, like we learned, Atzilus is not even Bria Yesh Miyayin. It's so complete Bittal. Atzilus comes from the word Eitzel, it's close to Hashem. Nevertheless, it's still called Olam Atzilus. Now, Olam means Helam. And therefore, Chassidus uses the word Atzilus, means Hatzola Vafrasha, actually a, a removal and a separation. What it means like this. Even though Atzilus is godly, godliness, it's still limited godliness. It's a world that has 10 levels, not 11, which itself is a limitation. And secondly, each level is limited in what it is. Chesed is chesed. So it says, now that was explaining why is it like this? Why is it that Hashem created this limitation, so to speak? Because otherwise, the, wood, the creatures in that world wouldn't be able to handle it. If it's too great, you need a limited form for things to get it. If not, it's way over their heads and they get nothing. So therefore, what does Hashem do? In the level, of, that's the whole concept of Yishtaushtas. Hashem creates worlds, halomim, halem, concealments, and the concealment is different levels. There's one concealment which is godly, but it's limited godliness, which is a, that's a world of Atzilas. And then you come into Bria, Yitzidas, you know, all those various different worlds. Listen, what? Part of Zayar. I know, but it's not Nevi'im Ksuvim. Pasach Leo is Zayar. I know, but... What do you mean, not Nevi'im? Who, who's coding? Is someone that's coding Eliyahu Nevi? Or is, is Eliyahu Nevi talking? Eliyahu Nevi in Zayar is talking. So how come it's not Ksuvim? He was a Nevi. It's not, if not in the Ksuvim, why isn't Nevi'im? Nevi'im. Because he didn't say it in Navi. It's not, there's no thing in Nevi'im. It's in it, Zayar. It's the speaking or the, their statements? It's the statements of Eliyahu Nevi. Can you speak in the middle of one of those Pesukim? I'm sorry, it's a halachic question. Yeah, they're not Pesukim. So you can answer a man. You can answer a man of the Pesuk too. That's your middle of Davani. A Maimer Chassidus is a revelation of godliness coming down into Seichel. It's godliness coming down into Seichel. Like Chassid, they would say, just like Chumash Devarim, Meshe Rabbeinu spoke. The old book of Zorim, Eila Dva, Meshe Liber Meshe, it's Mishnah Teira. Slava Yidav Hashem O Meshe Lamer, it's Meshe Rabbeinu speaking to the Jewish people. Meshe Rabbeinu says in Shema, V'nasati eisav v'satcha levem techa. I will give grass in the fields for your animals. Correct? So the Gemara, the question is, Meshe Rabbeinu doesn't give grass. Hashem gives grass. Why does Meshe Rabbeinu say, I'm giving grass? Okay. So the answer is, Shechina medaberes mitev greinu shel Meshe, as I'll say. The Shechina spoke through Meshe Rabbeinu. That means, when Meshe Rabbeinu, it's like when you hear something through a, a speaker, a microphone, yeah, 
you hear it, the speaker, the speaker says, I am giving, I'm doing, I am saying. It's the speaker that you hear it. But the answer is, it's not the speaker saying it. It's the, the speaker saying it, not the physical microphone. Yes? The microphone is only the vehicle that the speaker speaks. Correct? Meshe Rabbeinu was, and, and the microphone, by the way, is completely bottled to the speaker. The microphone can't say its own words. The microphone's only going to say what the speaker says. Correct? What the talker says. Okay. Meshe Rabbeinu was this microphone, so to speak, that when Hashem spoke, the Shekhinah spoke through him. He was a microphone. So Meshe Rabbeinu says, the Nasati Esav, he's not giving it. It means Hashem is giving it. I, Meshe Rabbeinu, was saying it. He's only the microphone. Yes? When the Rebbe says a Maimir, like we said, Siddim would say the following. When the Rebbe says a Maimir, it's Alukus becoming Seichel. When a Chassid learns a Maimir, it's a Seichel understanding Alukus. So when the Rebbe says a Maimir, it's a very spiritual revelation of godliness in the world. There were Maimorim, the Rebbe brings down in Ayyem Yem, and he says two or three Maimorim that which applies to that a lot of the Rabbeim or each one of the Rabbeim had my modem that they would repeat often not necessarily in public to purify the air didn't say a moment it was the same moment they repeated many times the Taras Ha'ave it says hey, that brings it down in a to purify the air so a moment is a lukus coming down into Seich now when a Rebbe says a Maimer, each Rebbe has his own style, so to speak, of saying a Maimer, because each Rebbe is a different revelation of a Lukus. The other Rebbe was Chesed and the Mitter, I mean, Chach Mabina, then Das, I mean, the Teferis, whatever. Each one of the Rebbe has his own style. And therefore, a Maimer is very different than a Sicha. A Sicha, the Rebbe could speak about anything. A Maimer is focusing on the level of a Lukus coming down into the world. And therefore, the Rebbe, the Rebbe, including our Rebbe, would hold on to a handkerchief when they said a mimer, to have a grasp into something physical to keep them here. Now, me and you don't get it. But that's, that's just because we don't understand, it doesn't mean that's not what it is. But that's what it is. Well, when I show you this thing about the Gidu, uh, when Mashiach gives very Chazak, the receiver doesn't receive anything. Here the Rebbe said the receiver doesn't receive anything. Or does he receive a little bit of what is coming in? Uh, so what it is like this. If you don't, if a Rebbe says a Maimon, let's say, and you don't understand it, the Nishama understands it. And that Nishama that hears, that level of Siddhis, impacts the goof like the voice that comes out from heaven and says, do tshuva, do whatever it is, who hears it? The neshama hears it. And it can have, it has an impact on the neshama. Yeah, the Rebbe says that if it comes down very strong, the receiver... It has to come down into limitation. So this level of alokus coming down in a mime is coming down in physical words, in physical paragraphs and that, yeah. So that's the limitation. Yeah, but it's a locus becoming revealed. For anything that comes down very strong, we get a little bit of it. Which is also good sometimes. But without it, you get nothing. Now, the, the more you open up your vessel, yeah. it's brought down to the Rebbe Rashab would completely, the opposite of indulging in Gashmias, to do the opposite, and the Gashmis didn't mean anything to them because they wanted to understand Chassidus. And godliness and preoccupation of worldly things are contradictory. The more preoccupied you are in worldly things, the less godliness you will get, and definitely less you'll feel. Right? So they, Pasha, were removed from the world completely. They didn't care about. Food, clothing, houses, cars, I mean, cars, we have anyway. They didn't care about all that stuff. When we are studying in Myanmar, we are studying in Myanmar, we don't understand. We're just saying, are we purified? 
Your neshama understands it, you become purified, yes. Are we able to purify the air too? Yes, yes. Physical air? Physical air. Yeah, it says in Ayyam here many times. The Mishnah is about prayer, this Tanya about prayer. Purifies the ear. So Needs air purification system. Are you so Spiritually purified, not the. Uh, are you supposed to properly dress when you leave the It's disrespectful if you don't. You lay in pajamas in bed and, uh, you know, uh, read a mimer. Now, is that better than watching television like that? I'm sure it is, but it's not, it's not the proper respect for Taylor. When a person davens, they're supposed to be respectful. I God, well, the guy, the God doesn't see me uh, in pajamas or whatever. Yeah, but... Okay, anyway, what? I was just going to say one of my friends, uh, father in is a big time of me. No. He learns Gemara like that. He's learning all the time, but... So he's learning an intellectual book. No, no, he's always learning. I mean, it's he's a, learning an intellectual book. He's not learning to do. No, it's not chas v'shalom. A person that could sit like that and learn is not getting the gedusha of Torah, because if it's the godliness of Torah, you wouldn't sit like that. If God is present, if the King is present, you lay in bed and talk to the King like that. Yes or no? Would you do it? No. Okay. So when you learn a mimer, they must be kind of a connected. That's just sitting opposite you and, and, and re- responding to it. So yeah, you're learning an intellectual book. You're going to gain a lot of knowledge, but you're not going to get the Gedusha of Torah. 